morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Alameda Proving Ground. Today, this is where we will be taking a leap back to the future. Firstly, it is um, obviously intended to demonstrate what is technically possible within a foreseeable time frame. This is um, what the FO15 stands for. Secondly, it is intended to contribute to fueling the discussion on future mobility scenarios. The key questions are, how can we make future individual mobility safe and comfortable? How can we face the changes in the nature of driving and the environment in which a car travels? We assume that the world 15 or 20 years from now will spin faster than it does today. Cities will get even, will get even sorry, cities will get even bigger, population will increase even faster urban areas will become even denser. In short, city life will be busier and more hectic and we will be all traveling even more frequently than we do today. It's clear that where, sorry, it's clear where this has to lead. Private space and time will become the luxury commodities of the future. Private space and travel time that can be sensibly used these two points will surely be at the very top of our customers' wish list in the future. We want to enable both, with cars that offer generous and intelligently designed interiors and that relieve the burden through autonomous driving. Beyond that, of course, it also protects the environment with its zero local emissions drive. But that's another story that isn't the focal point for us today. Let's look first at what this research car has to offer in terms of space. At a length of 5.22 meters, a width of more than 2 meters, and a height of 1.5 meters, it's not exactly a small car. Its elegant, almost monolithic design nevertheless gives it an extremely homogeneous look. Its wheelbase measures 3.6 meters, exceeding that of a Mercedes Maybach S Class by another 245 millimeters. These dimensions have facilitated an incredibly generous interior, which you can comfortably step into through saloon doors. This inviting lounge like quality marks the start of luxury through easing the burden. It includes Attractive swiveling lounge chairs that permit a face-to-face -face configuration, premium organic materials and communications technology that's intuitive to operate. The FO15 has fewer buttons than a smartphone. Instead, it's fitted with high-resolution displays integrated harmoniously throughout the interior. It is controlled entirely via touch gestures or eye tracking. The associated interactive elements are all over the vehicle. This means that while the car is driving autonomously to its destination, you can make sensible use of our valuable time by working or enjoying some relaxation. And all of this is undisturbed by the task normally performed by the driver. This is particularly helpful to the driver in situations where driving is more of a burden than a pleasure, such as congested traffic. The particular luxury is in the freedom of decision making and not just in terms of driving. Passengers have the option of deciding for themselves how much of the digital world they bring into the car from outside. You can create your very own personal retreat with virtual landscapes on the side displays or ambient lighting and simply shut the real world out for a while. Self-driving cars still have to win human trust. The term for that is social acceptance. Therefore, communication is not just limited to internal interaction between man and machine. There is also the exchange of information between car, pedestrians and the traffic infrastructure. The classic case is at a crosswalk. If I, as a pedestrian, have eye contact with the driver, he can signal to me that it's okay to cross. This type of situation will not change with self-driving cars. 
As the pioneer of this new kind of communication between people and cars, the F015 is equipped at front and rear with large LED surfaces, which are used to communicate with the outside world. This is how the car spend, sends specific messages to its surroundings. Here you see an example of how the external communication with people such as pedestrians works. The front LED light follows their movement, signaling, it's okay, I can see you. At the same time, the tracking light provides an indicator for the traffic behind. This alone will sig significantly improve road safety, such as when children move between parked cars. One thing is the in the shared space of the future, people and machines will be sharing the roads. The car-friendly city will become more people-friendly. Our guiding principle that people are the focus therefore applies not only to the passengers, but also to all other road users. We have designed the FO15 to be capable of the necess necessary communication and interaction. You can take a closer look at all of this later on the vehicle itself and in our various displays. Our experts will be happy to talk to you through the details. And something else I should point out. As you can well imagine, the digital experience world in the FO15 needs a massive amount of computing power. And because we have to represent the future of the automobile, of automobile using today's technology, the whole thing takes up a lot of packaging space. We ultimately made the decision to concentrate on the experience inside the vehicle and thus did not equip the car with the sensor systems needed for fully autonomous driving. That's why the FO15 is driving here in Alameda on a pre-programmed route. With the Berta Benz drive in 2013, we have already shown that we possess the technology and license to drive autonomously on public roads. But even without sensor systems, our research vehicle is still very sensitive. It's considerably more vulnerable to weather than our production cars. It's particularly reluctant to be out in the rain, or when the sun exposure causes high temperature, it needs to cool down occasionally. You see, this event today is extraordinary in several aspects. Not only that you are among the first in the world to get a ride with the FO15, you're actually also taking part in our research work actively. That's why we are particularly curious about the impressions you'll get from our luxury in motion. Ladies and gentlemen, we are convinced that this research vehicle shows a highly realistic image of future mobility. It is individual mobility, without exhaust and noise, without the stressful side of driving, and without limits when it comes to communication, luxury, and the sensible use of time and space. By the way, part two of Back to the Future was set in the year 2015. The cars in the movie may be able to fly, but they can't maneuver independently through heavy traffic, nor can they park themselves. So that puts us a good deal further ahead. I wish you an inspiring day, and I'm really looking forward to your feedback on the FO15 Luxury Motion.